Chris and this is my how to test your single phase electric motor video. So these single phase electric motors can be 110, 220. They're usually found in the home and shop and they can be for washers, dryers, air compressors, air conditioners. So many things use these. So these single phase motors need help to get them started. So they use a capacitor. Some can have a start capacitor and a run capacitor. This washing machine only has a start capacitor. Now these things hold a charge so you always arc them out with the insulated screwdriver before you touch them. You're going to need these when you test the motor on the bench. So if you're going to be testing these motors, it's better to pull the motor off and test it on a bench like I'm doing. Especially if you're on a concrete slab in contact with the ground or earth. This AC power seeks ground and that's how you get shocked and electrocuted when you're sitting there putting your hands in there while you're touching the ground or standing on concrete. So be super careful. You can't play games with AC power. Okay, so we're going to check the resistance in the windings. We're going to go through this little centrifugal start cutoff switch. We're going to look at it inside and check it. And then we're going to figure out what's wrong with this motor, testing it on the bench with the capacitor. So you're going to need a multimeter with the ohm symbol, the little horseshoe right there. If you don't have a meter yet, try to invest in an auto ranging meter like this fluke right here. See, it has an auto. This is going to make your life so much easier. So this is my first time in my life working on a washing machine motor. I am not an appliance repairman, so I don't know everything about this motor. I could not find any wiring diagram on the internet in 2019. All we're doing is we're trying to see if the windings have resistance, meaning that electricity is being able to go where it's supposed to go. This is a quick test and this test works. All these motors are wired a little bit different. Some have low speed, high speed. This one is just a one speed motor. Now it's a one speed motor and so it's going to have your normal run windings and then it's going to have start windings. So you're going to have to figure that out on your own. Like I said, all these motors are different, but if you have this motor, it's blue and white for the one speed run windings. Okay, so we're in the ohm range. We're going to put it on 200 and we're going to check and see what kind of resistance we got between the blue and white. 1.3, that's a low number, that's what you want, something that looks like that. Let's see what happens. So we got 1.4 ohms. So now we need to test the start windings. On this motor, it's this red and this brownish wire right here. You're gonna test them just like we did the other ones. Red and brownish. Okay, we're not getting nothing. The situation was the washing machine filled up with water the little timer goes to kick this motor on and instead of it spinning it makes a hum it goes huh and then if you let it sit there long enough you'll start smelling electrical burn smell and it did it one time and started working and then it did it to me again but this time i literally left it off for like five hours i forgot about it so that's pretty dangerous pretty sure it would trip the breaker but that's what was happening this motor was making an electrical smell and that's why we took it off to test it. So let's check it with a fluke. Okay, that is not good. All right, so our start windings are bad. If you're getting something weird, check it over and over and over. That is absolutely not what we want. That's crazy. The start windings in this motor are burned up. This motor is trash. All right, I guess I gotta get a new motor. Okay, yeah, I already had this motor, but that's literally what happened to me last week. It took about five days to get this motor, and thank God for the internet, thank God for this uh, appliance repair place. This motor, if you buy it brand new, is 260 to $300, which is crazy. The washer and dryer is 1300. I got this off of the internet for a total of $63 thanks to eBay. It's a used motor, but that's good enough for me. So always check everything before you just spend $260 or $300 on a motor. But like I said, it's used. So we got lucky in a way because we found the bad start winding. So let's test the resistance on this one and see if it's a little bit different. It might be. 1.3 just like the old motor. Now we're going to bench test the bad motor after this and show you what that looks like. So that's the same. Now let's check the start windings. Remember the red and brown. Remember we had resistance that just kept growing. Now we have 7.8. That's like a normal reading telling me the start windings are good. This motor checks out. So let's check it with the other meter. 
Very good. So we know the windings are good. Now let's talk about this little centrifugal cutoff switch. So this black piece is a centrifugal start cutoff switch. It's very important that you understand this. It's part of testing the motor too. If this switch fails, it can make your motor hum, heat up, and possibly burn up like this one did. So you got to look at your wire diagram or the machine. You're looking for the two wires that go to the capacitor. This is your start capacitor. One of these wires off the capacitor runs straight to this brown wire right here. The other one comes over here to this one position through the switch to the red wire. That's why we tested the start windings, but the wires coming in to the brown and to number one over here. So let's take apart this switch and look at it. Okay, so it's just one screw holding it to the unit. Take this out. Okay, this just slides out. So you can see how power comes in through the switch right here. It's got a little set of breaker points, contact points, and then it goes over here to the red wire. So this is the start cutoff switch. Motor starts up, it goes to the capacitor, and see those little springs in there. So when this motor starts up, it gets enough speed, the centrifugal force combined with the counterweights on this is going to make this move down like that and, and this one's gonna pop and you see this little wheel right there it's gonna go down like that so it's normal speeds up centrifugal force moves this whole thing and then slings that little wheel out of the way so you gotta make sure that this is moving free if you have one like this so when you're in here messing with the switch, we got the little contact points. Go ahead and take some sandpaper or something, probably finer than this, and just clean those contact points off to make sure they are working because they do get dirty for a fact. We clean the contacts off, that's very important. We go ahead and put this back together. So we're gonna go ahead and put the meter on the diode with continuity, no resistance. Now, if we touch these two terminals, we should have no resistance. Okay, so it's, it's hard to see in real life, but remember we pushed that little wheel back. So we're gonna go ahead and stick a screwdriver in there. So now that the wheel's pushed back, the switch should be open. So we should have nothing when we check these two now. So that means the centrifugal switch is working. Pull it out, check it one more time. Good, so that's all checks out. All right, so now we're testing this motor with live power. You be careful if you try this. AC power is dangerous and can kill you and shock you. When this is plugged in, we're getting power over here. This is my little wire that I made to just to test this motor. When I get done, I'm cutting this back off and putting it in my uh, box of parts. So we made this jumper wire like this because we have to run power through the capacitor to fully test this motor. I have another video where I go over checking the capacitors pretty good video go check it out say it a million times always discharge your capacitor before wiring anything to it so this is just like it was wired on the washing machine we're going to plug it in and see what happens okay so when you give it power it'll kind of move a little bit and start humming let's see that okay so if you hear that hum you need to unplug the machine from the wall and start investigating because that is going to lead to a burn smell and I don't know if it can cause a fire or not. Hopefully the breaker will trip out, but just wanted you to hear that hum. So we tested the windings and we know that our start windings are burned up. So there's no way that this motor is gonna start on its own. And what's sad about that is that this motor, if you just give it a little tug, actually will start running perfect. It's those start windings that act like a third phase to get the motor spinning in motion. So let's see what happens. Hear the hum? You hear the centrifugal switch, click back in, so it shoots out when it's spinning, clicks back in, completing that circuit again. Whenever it clicks out, it breaks that circuit. Let's listen to it one more time. Now, if you're testing this outside on the ground, you must use your green wire and ground it to that little copper tab or the body of the motor. We're inside a house, that's why we didn't have to hook up the grounds, but you still notice I don't go touching all over the motor. 
Now the capacitor right here, we have to discharge it every time we touch it. Let's go ahead and discharge it. It may pop like a firecracker, be careful. Okay, nothing. It's kind of scary doing that. Let's go ahead and take everything off. So the final test is the new motor. We're just gonna test it on a bench real quick, make sure it starts up on its own before I go put this on the washing machine. Okay, so when you're testing your new motor, give it power and then turn it off because we need to make sure the centrifugal switch is working correctly. We're gonna give it a little bit of power. All right, switch is working. So the centrifugal switch is working and the motor starts up when we plug it in instantly. Let's do it one more time. Okay, remember to discharge this every time you touch it. I'm not lying, I'm cutting this crap off. Okay, so I told you I'm cutting the end off. I'm gonna wrap this up. If somebody plugs that in there and touches those live ends, they can get shocked. Be careful when you do stuff like this. You DIY guys and girls, you can be the hero of your home when you do stuff like that. I saved over $1,000, $63 motor, and I went ahead and bought a new capacitor. It was under $10, shipped to my house. $63 versus $1,300, $1,400 for a new unit. And that unit's already lasted 15 years, and now, so now I can finally put this back in and wash my clothes. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.